Hello and welcome back to my lecture series on statistics. Today I'm going to show you the types of response variables that you may encounter when you work with data. So response variables, as you may remember from our first lecture, the response variable is what we put on the y-axis. And this is everything we measure in our experiments. So we measure something, or we may also count something. This leads us to different types of response variables. The first one is the easiest one. It is called a continuous response variable. Continuous response variables. Let's look at an example. This is, for example, when we weigh something and we measure the weight of a person the weight of an insect, the weight of a leaf. Continuous variables can take on any values, so these are real numbers. They may be positive or negative, and they always have a decimal point. Whenever we have continuous response variables, then we are in the realm of conventional linear statistical models. Now what happens if we count something? And what might be an example for a count? The number of leaves, for example. The number of leaves of a plant. These are not real numbers. They're usually so-called integer numbers, and they're usually larger than or equal to zero. We are also using linear models to analyze these count data. Quite often we use so-called generalized linear models. So whenever you have the choice, your software allows you to choose among different modeling types, then you should click on generalized linear models. Now the third one is a bit more tricky to think of. These are the so-called proportions. A proportion is bounded between 0 and 1. Example, the proportion of infected individuals in a population. These are bounded between 0 and 1, so within the interval 0 to 1. And whenever we have proportion data, we are also analyzing them using generalized linear models. Actually, even the continuous data can be analyzed using a generalized linear model with a so-called Gaussian distribution. We'll encounter that much later in our course. So for now, let's just keep in mind when you do a generalized linear model and you have these three different types of response variables in front of you, then you should use a Gaussian family for continuous variables, a so-called Poisson family for count data, and a so-called binomial family for proportion data. I would like to tell you already now that sometimes you encounter response variables that behave a bit more strangely. So you may end up with situations where, for example, you need to use gamma errors for continuous variables. Or you may end up using negative binomial errors in the case of count data. So I just mentioned these here, you don't need to know what it is yet, but we'll come back to that later on. Okay, there's another one. I just mentioned uh, three here up to now. The fourth one will be age at death. I'm just mentioning that we are doing survival analysis here, and survival analysis can also be done using generalized linear models. So as you can see, Generalized linear models are quite important when we do statistical analysis, 
and it's good to be aware of that from the start onward. Later on in the lecture series, we will encounter also other modeling approaches, for example, generalized least squares models. All of them are actually linear statistical models, and that's what we're going to deal with throughout the course. We'll talk about linear models and the different varieties of these. Thank you for listening to me for this quick overview of response variables. I hope you liked it, and I hope we're going to see us again soon in one of the next lectures. Bye-bye.